Today on The Real, let's face it, we've all got them. What are those pesky pimples trying to tell you? Wow. Pretty interesting, right? Plus, spring cleaning surprises. Jeremy free. And on Girl Chat, how we got locked up and lived to talk about it. How many of us at the table have been arrested? <laughs> what? On The Real. to think of ourselves at this table as good law-abiding citizens. Oh, yes. But did you know that depending on where you go, you could be breaking the law and not even know it? For example, according to the website weirdsexlaws.com, in Singapore, it's against the law to stand naked in front of your window. Ooh. Oh. Yes. My neighbor would have been arrested, okay? <laughs> and in London, it's against the law to check into a hotel under a fake name for the purpose of having sex. Oh, okay. dang. Ooh. I would have been arrested. There goes Pocahontas. <laughs> I know. So, ladies of the real, let's keep it real. Have you ever been arrested? for anything before. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how many of us at the table have been arrested? Raise your hand. Been arrested? What? Yeah. Every single one of y'all been arrested? Except yeah. for you. Lonnie, wow. what were you arrested for? Well, the first time I was arrested. First time? Okay, how many times have you been arrested? Oh my gosh, you guys. Well, I was arrested for like protesting. That's what I okay. always get arrested for, but my... Always. <laughs> uh, uh... <laughs> Oh my God. But the first time was when I was in college and I was working at a grocery store, me and my friend, yeah. and it was homecoming weekend. So we went to a club and after the club, we went to go get something to eat. Uh -huh. She was, um, we went to this cafeteria style restaurant. Yeah. I look around and she's being pulled by um, an undercover officer in the kitchen. I follow her in the kitchen and he says she's being arrested because she put soda in a water cup. And you can get arrested at, for that? Yes. Oh, 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 because you're stealing. Yes. And so I mm. followed her because she was my ride in the kitchen. So he said, you're getting arrested for trespassing because you shouldn't be here. Oh. So they took us down. This was in Houston. They took us down to the station. And when we got there, because hers was a petty theft, she went one way. I was a felony. They put me in jail with the hardcore criminals and murderers. And, and back then, what? I was fine. Back then, you couldn't tell me nothing because we had just came from the club, you know, yeah. and I was that tight size 10. Ooh, oh ooh you couldn't gosh. tell me nothing. <laughs> and y'all don't know, but Lonnie's booty be sitting ooh-wee high. Yes. So when I walked into the, in, into the holding cell, everybody was like, what you doing here? Because, you know, it, you know, I don't look like a murderer or a yeah. criminal or anything like that. Terrible. And so I they you. ended up, um, what ended up happening, I had to stay there for eight hours. <gasps> then they transferred me. Now, this is what happened. It was homecoming week. And back then, we didn't have cell phones. So everybody was gone to the homecoming game, including my boyfriend. So I had to wait, like, to the next day. And then they put me and transferred me to another jail. And um, I was like, oh my goodness, right? And I finally got in contact How with him. How do they transfer you? They put you on a bus yeah. with the other criminals. They like, just like this is a new black. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh, were you in handcuffs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what I were you wearing? Handcuffs. Still in your clothes? I had on my coat. But see, that's, that's why they transfer you because they don't know if you're going to get out because it was the weekend. Oh so my then gosh. they said if, they, if he doesn't come and bail you out, you're going to get the pink jumpsuit. And I said, they gonna, uh, no, it's the orange jumpsuit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I ain't getting no orange jumpsuit. No, he coming to get me. And then everybody in my holding cell, we became friends, though, you know, because 
You know, because I started talking to them. And Only there was Lonnie one girl would become for, friends with the people in her jail Lonnie? cell. Well, she was in, in for forged checks. It was one lady, they just pulled her out, because this is like yeah. two o'clock. Two I get it, though. You kind of want them to be on your good side. Exactly. And I then finally, my boyfriend came and got me out. He bailed me out. And by then, I was friends with them. I was like, you stop killing people. You stop writing false checks. Y'all do a better life. So that was my experience. That is crazy. Oh my God. Wow. I just want to say the charges were dropped. I am not a felon, all right? All right. Wow. I was I arrested two it. times. When I was You in... were arrested two times? Yes, yes. I thought okay. I knew y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one time I wasn't scared, and one time I got real scared. The one time in high school, I, um, I oh. learned how to hotwire a car. <gasps> so I can what pretty much... Mean? Boom, okay. <laughs> what so does this mean? I was real proud of my skill, though. Like, I can jump in. You I can get, start a car. I can enough. break into any Toyota Camry before the year of 1992 or a Honda Civic before 1994, and I can start up any car and go cruising down the freeway. I can. Wait, you any guys are car. plotting that? Yes. What? You're plotting okay, you that? Can, you so can anyway, start the car without a key. I had no long idea. Story, oh, long God, story, really. I got in trouble because I was pulling donuts in the parking lot near my school. The Jeannie, school he's slang. What does pulling donuts mean? Donuts, you haven't seen Kanye and Jay Z? Oh! Yes. Do it. It's oh, a round. It's so amazing. It like you go donut. in a circle. Yes, that yes, is really. But the punks that I were in that. the car with me, you guys know who you are, jumped out of the car when the popo came <gasps> up and cuffed me, and they took off one way, the other one took the other, and they arrested the Asian girl because I was the one sitting next to the Toyota Camry. So that's just what's happening, okay? But the time oh I got real God. scared, that time, I'll be honest, I, I, I got out of it because I had to do community service, so I had to clean the streets of Milpitas. And then um, after that, uh, my parents never found out about it at the... Well, now they know. Hi, Mom and Dad. They never found out about it because I left the phone off the hook for a really long time, so they called, but they never got through, so they, I just did the community service and then got free. But the one time that I learned my biggest lesson of my life was when I got caught stealing at Eastridge Mall at Sanrio Gift Gate, which is a Hello Kitty store. So I walked in. Oh, yes. my God. So you guys, I walked in, okay? I was about... The Asian stealing oh. Hello Kitty. This is all I wrong. hate you. I no, you guys, you so let me much. tell you. Oh my God, I get sweaty. Okay, so I walked in, and I remember they had you know, all the pink, the Karopi frog, the, the um, um, uh, what, Pikachu. Pikachu, all those guys, right? And I saw this Hello Kitty, big, beautiful bubble gum machine, and it was shiny, and she had little gumballs that were How shaped like were all you? the characters. Um, I was about 14. Okay. 14. Wow. And it was beautiful. And you know, Sanrio, you know that price? All the way on the bottom, that that it's got like a bunch of Japanese letters and then the price. It's always uh -huh. real expensive, and I knew I couldn't take it. But I wanted that bubble you know, that bubble gum machine so bad. And I was a Hauser back in the day. Do you guys remember Hauser? I remember. Kind of like cross like cross colors. You would wear like what uh, are these you know, things? You like is this baggy a West Coast clothes. Baggy clothes. Yes. You wear your pants backwards. Yeah. You never like no. crisscross. Yeah. We'll make you jump, jump. Yes. No. I remember that. Okay, so I was a Hauser. Thank no, you. Jump, Thank yeah. you. So I walked into that Sanrio and I knew I was gonna take that. So I bought the gum, because the gum was refill, the, the refill for the bubble gum machine. I bought the gum and then I slipped the bubble gum machine into the back of my pants, because I ain't got no ass. So yeah. the thing fit, I ain't got no butt. So it fit right into the back of my thing and I walked out. Rule number one, when you steal, don't ever walk out by yourself. You walk out with a group of people. We are not how giving you just tips not steal. on how to steal. Okay. Just don't steal. Just well, that I learned first. my lesson. How about just not steal? So okay. I go out and I'm making noise because the <laughs> bubble gum machine. So the woman says, "Can I get you a bag for your bubble gum, um, um, your, your your refillable thing?" And I bent over to tell her, "No, no, no, it's okay. I've got the bubble." Anyway, the thing fell over. I got caught. She takes me in, and the lady was so mean she wouldn't let me go. So she sat me down. She said, "I'm gonna call your mom. What's your mom's number? I'm, you're not leaving here until you call." Your mom. So here comes Mama Mai oh into East Oh my Ridge God. Mall. Yo, you guys, once the lady scared me enough, I'm crying. I promised her I would never do it again. Um, I apologize. I apologize. She uh, had the security mall cops come get me. It was so scary. And she was about to let me go. Guess who made them cuff me and walk me out anyway? Mama, Mama Mai. Mama Mai. No, it's not funny. So there I am getting handcuffed with my, her, the person's hand on my neck, and they're like, we really don't need to do this. We're gonna, you take her anyway, make her walking right now. So I go walking through Giftgate, 
through the mall, past the Santa, oh, past man. the elevator, into the Macy's department store, past the cosmetics counter, all the way outside. And the whole time, Mama Mai's like, you see that? That's Jeannie Mai. Jeannie Mai, that's not my daughter. She a bad person. Look at her face. Look at her face. This is the face of the ceiling. And I'm like, this is the face of the, the ceiling. ceiling. <laughs> the whole thing, I you guys, it. I've never gone back to Eastridge Mall. And Your I've mom knew what she was doing. Well, I that's will that's never do it again. Yes. That's why. Ever, it was the worst. My Much story is like Jeannie's story. What happened? Uh -oh. oh, man. What happened? I led you worship at church oh, on a Sunday Adrian. when I was 13. And then I went to. <laughs> oh. Dang, well, why I gotta look like that? <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, I'm hoping there. So yes. this is, these are more reasons for why I would want to change my last name. Adrian Bylone stole things. Adrian Houghton would never do such a thing. <laughs> right. Okay. That's good. I, I needed a whole new Google search, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. With that being said, uh, I had led worship. There was a Rite Aid on uh, Grand Street in Clinton in New York City in the Lower East Side, and I loved going to the Rite Aid, and I would go there. I know it sounds terrible, but in my neighborhood and in my upbringing, not with my parents, but with friends in school and that sort of thing, you guys, it sounds terrible, but like stealing was normal. Like if you could get it for free, why are you gonna pay for it? Yeah. That's a terrible way to think, okay? But the two things I stole at Rite Aid were a hot oil treatment. Oh my God. <laughs> I was trying to keep this hair conditioned and moisturized. And I stole a 99 cent uh, wet and wild, wild eyeliner. Yes, you knew the oh, brand. Not, yes. You ain't have a dollar? No, girl, I didn't have, I, girl, I didn't have 50 cents to rub together, okay? With that being said, I stole, crazy thing was, um, I was on my way leaving the store. I actually had a shirling jacket that my parents had gotten me from the Gap Kids. And the pockets, they had worn it for so long that the pockets um, had holes in them on both sides. So I could, this was oh, like my ceiling jacket. Yeah. Yes, girl, I would put things in my pocket and it would just float on to the back. So badass. Yeah, it would float to the back. So what happened? Because they really prosecute there at Rite Aid. Okay. I How do you Rite know Aid, that, I appreciate you. <laughs> I love you the Rite Aid this? store. I, I am a, a drugstore junkie in yeah. the sense that, like, I love beauty products. Yep. Yep. Hence, I stole a hot oil treatment and an so eyeliner. So what happened? So as I'm leaving the store, uh, these men walk up to me. And they're like, really? You're going to walk out with that? That's how you feel? That's what you're going to do? You're too pretty to be doing this. Why are you doing Like, talking to me crazy. By the way, they were dressed in regular clothes, Latino men. They were uh, cops, probably. They, they were, were cops. undercover cops. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much told me that you young kids are always stealing from this, this store so much oh. that they had called in like reinforcement and they were back there. They cuffed me. <gasps> yes, and it's so scary to be cuffed. And they took me to the back. My mom did not answer the phone when they called her, thank God. Oh, so yes. the, my next option was to call my cousins. They came and picked me up. Finally, my mom did get on the phone. They held me there in the back. We're talking crazy to me. Like, yo, these police officers will intimidate you and talk reckless. Like, get ready to go to jail. You don't know what's gonna happen there. I hope you know how to fight. Yeah. And vulgar things and other things. They, they were scare you straight. They were you scaring you. Weren't you, you legit scared though? There's nothing Heck like yeah. either of oh. you guys cry. Oh, oh, oh I cried. I didn't cry until my mom arrived and started um, fighting me. Let me say Your it again. mom fought. I did not start crying until my mother arrived and started whooping me in front of the police officers. Yes. They're like, ma'am, 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 we're gonna arrest you if you keep hitting her. Yeah. She was like, what? Like, yeah. just took off yeah. on me. Yeah. Yo, my mama said, if I ever get made arrested, me cry. she said, if you ever get arrested, don't call me. I ain't getting you out of jail. Oh. And that, you know, yes, so, so I never called her. Cause yes. she, we'll she see. was like, no. no yeah, my mom was scared. too petty for that. I no. actually didn't end up going to jail because I was considered a juvenile and I actually ended so up You were paying, saved by your age. Correct and I paid like a major fine. Like the items I bought were maybe $2, like, Adrian. And I ended up, we ended up paying like hundreds of dollars. Yeah, but that's better than doing community service in public. Like there's nothing like all the kids in school watching you. I did paper pickup graffiti. in high school. You did what? the what? what? Paper pickup? Y'all never heard of that? What's that? No. Nah. Not no? really. What's that nice is stuff that, you done did? Is that a legal crime? Is What'd that you something do? No, that crime? What it's is? just, I just put gum underneath my teacher's seat. You know And right. it's oh not the same to me. I know not, it's not what? the same. I'm just That's trying not, to weirdly this, feel a part of the like, conversation. She's not thuggish, ruggish uh, bone like no. that. Let me, let, no. me, let me commit a crime. Yeah. 
Hey, no, one is paper Ooh. pickup. Paper pickup is when you have to go around the entire high school and pick up all yeah, the trash. Commu like community so it's like service. community service, but it's for it high school. It is not like I had to clean graffiti off of Bank hey, of you America. Hey, like, you win. I don't want to do what y'all did. Car. The car when I was 17. And they still made you do, like, yeah. Like, oh my God. Would you be, would you be all right if I took them? Look, man, I was trying to hot oil treatment my hair. That's all I was trying to do. No. Moisturize my See, situation guys, and preserve was, my sexy. You I never, was, never, I have been, never, ever, 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 ever been arrested because one, I'm more afraid of my mom and dad than I am of the popo. I will tell you that. I hear that. My mom and dad were in the military. And also, my dad was a police officer. He was a correctional officer for some time at the Glendale Police Station. So Ooh. he already scared me. But what? Oh, go ahead. Go, no, 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 no. Hear your story. I really, I don't have one. A friend. <laughs> but you've, you've never, you've never like even, you've never taken something that didn't belong to you. Did you not get caught? I, I. No. Ooh, no, that, no, don't, no, no, that don't okay. count. If you don't get caught, you ain't a criminal. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. There are two things that happened that to me. That's the street. Two, that's street. There were two things that happened to me. One, I got I got pulled over for drunk driving. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, that's wait, good. Wait, no. Not really, y'all. Why? Because here's the catch. I wasn't even drunk. Wait, what? Wait, but they pulled me over. I had to do the test and everything. I swear to God. And you I had not been drinking. I had not been drinking. So I sounded like every other drunk driver. Like, I swear to God, I have not been drinking. You're that bad of a driver? I was that bad of a driver. They yeah. thought you was drunk. They did. I had to do ah! the, uh, the <laughs> eye the thing. Light. I had to do the nose thing. I had to walk on the line. I had to do the breathalyzer thing. And then afterwards, I was like, I, I told you so. <laughs> I wasn't drunk. But the other thing is, is I, I don't know, maybe because of my mommy brain, I will literally pick up things and not realize that I still have it in my hand. And I'll walk away with it. Sure, why guys, not a writer? No, I swear to God, you guys. I swear to God, though, I return it. I returned like a $4, like, kitty ring. It's just in me, guys. I can't help it. So you realized you had it. You walked away. And I then... drove back. So I walked, I walked away, got into my car, realized while I'm driving, oh, my gosh, I still have this ring. Why are y'all looking at me like that? That's a good well, thing. I, I would like you to know that I have had some personal growth. The other day, while we were going to go to Eden's birthday party, yeah. I went and I bought a gift card and a toy and, the, and I had a balloon in my hand. Well, yes. I paid for everything here, but the balloon was still in my hand. I was gonna walk out and Tam, you'd be proud. I gave the balloon back because I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Everybody knows breaking a bad habit is really hard. In fact, researchers say that habits are formed and reinforced via a habit loop. And once oh. a habit becomes automatic, it's harder to break. Ugh. So the study also suggests giving yourself 66 days to wean yourself off of a bad habit if you really want to break it. It went from 21 to 66. I know, that's a long time. It's changing. I thought it was three weeks. Why 66, I yeah. wonder? I mean, I don't know. it's like two months and a week and a day. Yeah. It's a long time. That's, that's math funny. But you know what, though? <laughs> I will say, when I did my detox, I yeah. did, because within that time, you are tempted. And I think sometimes 21 days is not enough because you yeah. need whatever. And so if you can extend it for as long as you can, then it actually makes it better. That's actually very wise. Yeah. That's how you adopt it to become a lifestyle. Exactly. And that's why you eat healthier now. I Look do, at you. I eat a lot, but, awesome. you know, I really do. You do. So I will say that. Yeah. But Got when it. it comes to bad habits, like what would you guys say is like your worst habit or something you've been working on for a long time? I've been working on exercise, and it's just hard. I'm tired a lot, you yeah. know? Yeah, well, because we work this show. Yeah, because the way we work, and yeah. it's hard for me to, to incorporate exercise. Yes. So that's what I want to try to do, is incorporate more yeah, exercise. Yeah, that's good. That's good, Lonnie. Yeah. What about for you, Tam? Other than bad sex. habit. What? Are these serious bad habits? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh, serious ones? What is your worst well, habit? Well, what's your bad habit? Or list them. Mine is really embarrassing. What? What is it's it? It's kind of gross. We don't know it? So, I no. think I know. What what? How do you know, Wait, Lonnie? I, I kind what of wanted... is it? Oh, 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 guys, I'm really embarrassed. What? I pick my toenails. Oh, that I is literally. Not bad. I, I no, no, that's that's nasty. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's. I actually pick it, and then I pick, I pick the big toe nail off sometimes. Wait, what? Yeah, like you the peel tip the of nail it. Off? I peel, I peel the tip of my big 
toenail off. And then, and then what do you do with it? Put it in your mouth. Do you eat it? Do you eat it? That's no, she do. wait, no, wait, 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 wait. She eats it. Hold on, she the Mary Moore has it. Be Hold honest. On. I do God not eat watching. it. God do you is watching. Flick, do you I flick not, it. Do you I flick it on us. No, I never <laughs> flick it. You eat it. You I put don't it in eat your it. Mouth. I wouldn't you eat it. You chew on it. Adam. You chew I don't on put it. it on Adam. Do you collect it? You cannot put it on my baby. No, I don't put it on my kids. You put it in a little, a little dish and she you chews save it. it. She chews it. I sniff it. <laughs> what is wrong with you? But why? You sniff it. But why? <laughs> what does it smell like? Like toes, like Fritos. That's what it smell like. Wait, it smell? Does it have? It has a smell? Like toes. Friend, can we lay hands on you and pray for you right now? I'm, I'm the only one that does that. That's an unused. I don't do that. But, you know. I just, Wait, I just, I just, I'm. Can we? I can't stop picturing Tamara. Wait, none toes. of y'all play with your feet. Oh, I play with my feet for sure. It's kind of like that. Come on now. No, 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 no. Really. No, I don't sniff no. the nail part. I don't. No. I don't. I you have, don't steal, I have but you do hold on stuff. for a second, y'all. This is crazy because y'all judging me and y'all were the ones arrested. I'm just saying. <laughs> that. All I did was picking pick your toes is not a crime. That is true. Picking your toenails is not a crime. What's your bad? I habit? have. I have a few. I, I have several bad habits. Okay. Because I'm okay with it that these things happen. I am the biggest in bed eater you will ever meet in life. Um, when we were getting prepped, I literally was like, what they're like, what do you eat in bed? My husband was like, anything that leaves crumbs. I have a like that's come on, that's really gross to be sleeping in bed with crumbs. It's disgusting. But it's the most beautiful thing to eat in bed while watching a movie, is it not? No. Wait. Yes, wait. Popcorn in bed, sandwich like. Don't you? You also, you get your sucky sucky on in bed. Yeah, sometimes I got crumbs in my back. <laughs> while I'm at it. it. And then he can lick it off. There you go. <laughs> it all works. It's a snack. I love to eat in bed. You Hold guys, up. I literally, before, when I was single, I would literally sleep with like a bag of chips or something right here like this, and I would sleep like this. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh my God! You Wait, never did that. Real talk. What's the no. What's the oldest piece of food you found in your bed? Uh -oh. Honestly, popcorn uh, crumbs or kernels is what I mean. I, everybody knows I have a popcorn addiction. Yes. I love popcorn. Yes. So I'm normally will be like, oh, popcorn. <gasps> yeah. And then where does it go? You in the eat garbage. It? No. Oh, okay. I'm not oh. gonna eat it. You don't that sniff it? That is bad. <laughs> I don't sniff it. But you guys, Jeannie points out another bad habit that I have, which what? is I love to eat with my hands. Oh, God. I... Yeah. <laughs> she does. No, the she judge... gets real comfortable with it. Like, I love to eat. Am I. Asians don't eat with their hands? Ain't that cultural? I mean, ah! no, Ethiopians, Ethiopians eat with their Ethiopians hands. Do. I have eat. African in me as well. You this do. is all That's part of my culture. <laughs> So I'm like in there, like you guys. You know, I would it wouldn't be so bad, but utensils. you lick. You go just okay. I understand you eat, eat like that, but then you eat and lick, and it's like that's where I am the grossness cleaning my hand comes from. I am cleaning my. But then hand. you go back in after you have licked, and, and I and I go into other people's plates. Exactly. With my and hands we're at as a well. restaurant with communal food, people. Are you hey. seeing the problem here? I, I okay. Um, thank you so much, woman. I'm so glad you and I can person. have a nice meal wow. together. It's time for our girl Adrian to set you straight. Is she up to the challenge? Absolutely. <laughs> this is absolutely Adrian. Absolutely. Absolutely not. It's absolutely. Absolutely not. Ah. It's like her mom when she does that. I know. All right, ladies. <laughs> I'm in my zone and I'm ready to... So let's hear it. Okay, Aid. our story comes from Kristen Chrisman in Racine, Wisconsin. Hi, babe. Hey. Who watches us on today's TMJ4. Kristen writes, hi, guys. <laughs> Hello, Adrian. I've been with my husband for 23 years. Last year, my husband's family suffered a loss. While we were at the funeral with all of his family, out of nowhere walks in his ex-girlfriend. 
It was odd to me that she was there because she didn't know the person who had passed away. Wait, and I was under the impression that she and my husband had not talked in over 20 years. As I watched her walk towards my husband, I couldn't help but grow more and more jealous because she not only hugged him, but she proceeded to stroke his cheek with her hand. Mm. What? what? I was shocked that she touched my husband so intimately. Ooh. Adrian, am I overthinking this or do you think this is absolutely something I should be concerned about? All right, I'm not the only one saying it. Say it with me, everybody. <laughs> absolutely. Girl, I have concernment in my heart. It's like discernment and concern all at the same time. Yeah. Okay, seriously though, you absolutely should be concerned for multiple reasons. I think the main reason is why was she there? I have some questions I have. Like, yeah. why was she there? Number two, why was she so comfortable that she felt she could touch your husband's face? And third of all, what was his reaction to her touching his face? Did he let this happen? Especially in front of you, you're in the room. Yeah. That is crazy disrespectful. Now, I will say this, most men wouldn't be this, uh, out in the open with this, like if she was a side chick and she is his side chick, why would he let her in front of you be touching his face? That just sounds weird. Right. But um, you have to not allow somebody to rattle your feathers of a marriage of 23 years. That's a long time to be married. So, although all of us here are like, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm sure you were initially feeling that same way. Gather your thoughts, get yourself together, and the person you need to talk to is not me. It's your husband. Wow. So you need to ask your husband why she felt so comfortable, and again, what was his reaction to this? Because that is unacceptable. For, to be disrespected by another woman in front of you is just yeah. not okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if he wasn't doing this, touch my face, Lonnie. Hey, there's a problem. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you absolutely have all the right to be concerned. Yeah. Get some absolutely. of these questions answered. You know what, Munchkin? Here. You did it again. You hit the nail on the head with this round. We all try our hardest to prevent acne breakouts, but did you know that paying attention to where you break out is just as important as prevention? Did you know that? Yeah. A theory called face mapping suggests the location of your blemish can give clues to where problems are happening in the rest of your body. So. This is so important for us to talk about. Yes. Let's talk about it. <laughs> that was, that was, I did it. That was good. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll go first. Here's a picture of a typical face. Let's see. Cute, right? And here's Beautiful. the breakdown of how your face is connected to the rest of your body. It's pretty fascinating. So let's start with the pimples that appear on your cheeks. If you develop a pimple in this area, it could have something to do with your respiratory system. Many things can trigger breakouts here, like a cold and pollution outside mm. and inside your home. Adding plants to your home can help clean the air naturally, or consider investing in an air purifier for your home or office space. Acne on the left cheek could tell you about problems with your left lung, Whoa. while acne on the right cheek displays issues with the right. Wow. Pretty interesting, right? Yeah. That's a good one, Tam. Right? Good one. That's right yeah, on. that's very helpful. Like... Hey. Yeah, thank you. All right, now on to the forehead pimple. If you get a pimple here, your body may be telling you that you're having a hard time in your digestive system. Try eating bitter herbs like kale, probiotics like yogurt, or fruit like papaya before each meal to help your body break down food. Forehead pimples could also mean that you're not getting enough sleep, everybody. Um. About seven to nine hours a night is ideal for a good night's sleep. Wow. wow. Try to push it in, you know? Put yeah. your phone it's so one rare. Some, yeah. so many of us don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Okay, I wanna talk about the pimples that show up around your eyes and near your ears. What? This area is related to your kidneys and liver. So a pimple in that area is a sign of dehydration. Don't ignore oh. the need for water, hydrate yourself. And if you suspect liver issues, add dandelion tea, extra onions, and garlic to your diet. The tea will help detox your liver while the antioxidants in the garlic and onion will help flush the liver to prevent <coughs> liver disease. Wow. That's very helpful. <coughs> That's super helpful. All right, ladies, there's one zone that breaks out when you're stressed or have hormonal changes, and it's the 
Shin zone. <laughs> so to help prevent pimples caused by stress and hormone changes, there are a few things you actually can do. You can get an ample amount of sleep, like Jeannie said, drinking the right amount of water, and eating leafy veggies can actually help prevent a flare-up. Wow, oh, this is no. such great information. Right? It really is. Yeah. We're so glad we talked so about helpful. this. It's time to get in all the nooks and crannies and do a bit of dusting. That's right, spring cleaning is here, but did you know that there are items around your house that you walk past every day that actually need cleaning too? <gasps> Don't worry though, we got you. And today we're here to answer the age old question, I gotta clean what? <laughs> items that clean things for you, but you should actually be cleaning them as well. I'm talking about your washing machine, dishwasher, and shower head. Ooh. Grease and grime build up in washing machines, but you can clean them by adding a fourth of a cup of baking soda and two cups of white vinegar into the drum, then running a hot cycle. Wow. Yep. It's very easy. Now, for your dishwashers, sometimes leftover food and soap scum get stuck. So to clean them, place a cup filled with white vinegar on the top rack and run a hot cycle. When that's done, you're just gonna sprinkle some baking soda all over the bottom of the dishwasher and run another cycle. That's another awesome. easy step. Now, your shower head is prone to all sorts of nasty stuff, including bacteria. Ooh. Clean it by tying a Ziploc bag filled with one third cup of baking soda and one cup of vinegar over it and let that soak overnight and it'll be just like new. Wow! wow. Those are some good right? That's I'm really good. gonna do that. I use all of them. I'm wow. really going yes. to do that because you guys, I've never cleaned my yes. shower head. Yeah. 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 Most of us haven't. Yeah. yeah, so now we know how to do it. Now here's okay. another thing you probably don't think to clean, your reusable grocery bags. Yep, these bags carry more than just your groceries. They carry loads of bacteria and germs. Ugh. But don't worry, you can get rid of the germs in a flash by making your own disinfectant spray. A mixture of water, vinegar, and tea Tea tree oil is all you need. Just make sure you spray all the corners and you spray that handle. And you know what? Ah, ah. You, <laughs> you jar me free. Wow. Awesome, Lonnie. Ooh, that is so good. Good. Lonnie. Those are the things that you just never think of. Right. Now, I've got a question for all of you. What? When's the last time you cleaned your toothbrush holder? Mm. Now, your toothbrush holder can be one of the most germ-infested items in your house. Oh. And since that's where you store your toothbrush, germs can easily spread there as well. Nasty, right? Yes. Yes. Now, don't worry. I have a quick remedy to get rid of those germs. Those holders are easier to clean if they have a removable top like this, you guys, obviously. But, you guys, if it doesn't come off, it'll just take a little bit more effort, like this one here. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to rinse the toothbrush holder out with hot water, and you're going to wipe it down on the outside, just like that. Make sure you get it real good. Then you're going to use a pipe cleaner to get inside the slots, just like this, to make sure you remove any, you know, hidden grime and toothpaste. Just like that. Nice. Next, you guys, you're going to fill the toothbrush holder with antibacterial mouthwash, and you're going to let that sit for about two minutes. Lastly, soak the whole thing in vinegar for about 15 to 30 minutes and you are good to go. <laughs> and while you're at it, did you know that you should be cleaning your toothbrush as well? Yeah. That seems pretty mm -hmm. obvious, but you guys, this is how you do it. Soaking the head of your toothbrush in a cup of vinegar once a week is what you should do to keep the germs at bay. Just gonna put them in there, just like that. Boom. Wow. Wow. That's so easy. It's time to spring into action with a brand new game that is literally for the birds. <laughs> if these two teams of hens want to make it, they're going to have to shake it because one set of chickadees will be waddling off with 500 bucks. <laughs> Get ready, it's time to play spring chicken. <laughs> See, we've pre-plucked two teams of spring chickens, so let's meet them. Adrian. Our first team of chicks is Nisha Coleman and Ashley Chisholm. <laughs> Where are you guys from and how good are you at shaking your tail feather? We're from Los Angeles. And we all shake right. it all the time. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now. <laughs> all right, and playing against them are these two hens over here. It's Vivian Gonzalez and Valeria Vasquez. <laughs> Where are you from, and are you ready to shake it till you make it? We're from San Diego, California. Woo! 
And we're ready to shake it, shake it. Oh, shake it, shake it. Well, you all it. look so cute in your chicken costumes. Lonnie, how do they play? Well, Tam, these lovely hands are bursting at the seams with eggs to lay. Turn around and show them, ladies. Show them your, your eggs, see? Oh. At go, one teammate will run to the nest in the center and shake their tail feathers in order for their eggs to fall out. After 15 seconds, you'll hear this sound, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> which signifies that it's time to switch because it's the other chickadees' turn to shake their tail feathers. After 30 seconds, whichever team lays the most eggs will win $500! Now beware, your eggs have to land inside your team's nest to count. All right, so if they're landing out here on the green, it don't count. Ready? Ready. So All right, let's put 30 minutes. seconds on the cuckoo clock. Oh. <laughs> when I say go, get to shaking. On your marks, oh get set, go! All right, right, Adrian, one. how many eggs did team <laughs> one lay? Okay, we've got one, two, two three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, ten 11, 11, 12, 12 13, 13, 14, 14, 14 15, 15, 16. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we've okay, got wait, 16. wait, 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 right. wait. We gotta Alba count team two. two. All right, here we go. <laughs> count with me, folks. One, one two. two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Wow! That was close. That was close. So that means, Team Two, you are the top spring chicken. And that's one five million I'm sorry, Team One. You didn't quite have it today, but don't worry. You're still going to take home the real T-shirt. Yes, right? you are. Right. <laughs> <laughs>